Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another 10 Things You Didn't Know About episode. On today's episode, we will be looking at some interesting facts about the Dodge Brothers. Now, let's get started. Number 1. A famous composer wrote a tribute to the brothers. The Detroit elite turned out to be a tough crowd when John and Horace Dodge were trying to establish themselves as newcomers. Horace was denied entry to the country club, which prompted him to build an enormous, over-the-top mansion on a piece of land directly next to it. Horace loved boating, and that was one way he made some connections. But one of the things he is most remembered for is his generous support of the Detroit Symphony Orchestra. He and his wife made some significant donations to the organization and are largely responsible for the fact that the symphony still exists today. After Horace's passing, famous composer Victor Herbert wrote a piece of music called the Dodge Brothers March as a tribute to the brothers. Number 2. The Dodge family's North American roots started back in 1629 on the East Coast. Ezekiel Dodge moved from Massachusetts to Michigan in 1830, repairing bow engines to make money. His son Daniel eventually took control of the business, evolving the company into an engine repairing and building service. Daniel's sons, Horace and John, soon picked up on their father's enthusiasm for motors. They followed their father around the shop, learning all they could about mechanics. The pair were two red-haired urchins, who spent many hours at their father's side, learning the machinist's trade. John was the quieter of the two and the better machinist. Horace was the leader and the financer making sure that no one took advantage of the pair. The brothers were inseparable. Number 3. As the Dodge Brothers company was growing and seeing success, fate stepped in and everything changed. During a visit to New York, John Dodge caught pneumonia and passed away shortly thereafter. His brother also fell ill and died several months later. With their unexpected deaths happening so close to one another, the business was left in the hands of their wives. The widows decided to sell the Dodge Brothers company to an investment bank, and they received $146 million from the sale. With her second husband, Alfred Wilson, John Dodge's widow decided to build a 110-room mansion that cost $4 million. The 88,000-square-foot masterpiece was constructed in Michigan. In 1957, the couple donated their estate, everything inside, and the expensive land lot to Oakland University, now a National Historic Landmark, called Meadowbrook Hall. The mansion primarily acts as a museum and as an event space for occasions like weddings. Number 4. Before striking out on their own, the Dodge brothers, John and Horace, worked for a variety of different companies as machinists, starting with bicycles and then finding their way into the automotive business. They started designing and producing parts for various cars. The owner of Oldsmobile recruited them to build engines, transmissions, and axles. But the Dodge brothers soon gave up their existing clients for an enticing bid from Ford. Ford was trying to produce a new model, and as the legend goes, the Dodge brothers helped re-engineer the car to turn it into a success. They were responsible for building almost every part of the Model T, but Henry Ford did not respond to their input about improvements for the vehicle, so the brothers decided to break away and start their own business. With the flaws of the Model T in mind, they knew they could create a car to top what was already on the market. Number 5. When John Francis Dodge and Horace Elgin Dodge first started the company, they weren't producing automotives. Instead, they were producing automotive equipment, selling their parts and accessories to various car makers in the Detroit area. In particular, the brothers were getting a lot of business from the old motor vehicle company and the Ford Motor Company. Close to 20 years later, Horace had designed the innovative four-cylinder Dodge Model 30. The luxurious vehicle featured an all-steel body, a 12-volt electrical system, 35 horsepower, and a sliding gear transmission. While it would still be some time before their vehicles and company would go mainstream, the brothers earned enough good faith from their other endeavors that the brand zoomed to number two on the United States sales list in 1916. Number six. As I previously mentioned, the Dodge brothers helped produce parts for the Ford company, and their work helped make the rival brand a success. As the brothers were producing vehicles, Henry Ford approached the pair about the Model T. The brothers were so encouraged by Ford's design that they signed a contract with the rival company, committing themselves to producing Model T parts. Outside of the rubber tires and buckboard wood seats, 
The Dodge brothers produced every part of Ford's Model T. The relationship ultimately ended when Ford built his own plants in Detroit, making the brothers essentially useless. Furthermore, Ford stopped paying the brothers their stock dividends, resulting in a $25 million win for the Dodges in court. They had the last laugh when the brothers used the designs for the Model T to produce the Model 30. You can guess which vehicle proved to be the most successful. Number 7. Now this fact has nothing to do with the Dodge brothers, it's still pretty fascinating. The 2014 Ram 1500 was the first compact pickup to offer a diesel engine. While there was generally a demand for these types of vehicles, no company relented on their general standard gasoline engine. Dodge finally released their Ram 1500 with a 3.0 liter, 6 cylinder turbo diesel engine. The vehicle could deliver 240 horsepower and 420 foot pounds of torque. Both impressive specs when considering the use of diesel. And well, the fact that the Ram is a heavy duty truck. Furthermore, the vehicle offered a maximum payload of 1,600 pounds and a towing capacity that could max out at 9,000 pounds. Perhaps most importantly is the vehicle's fuel economy. We know the apprehension that consumers have when they consider a diesel fueled vehicle as their budgeted gas money will quickly be thrown out the window. Dodge remedied this to the best of their ability, offering a 28 mile per gallon fuel economy on the highway which was a better number than any similar sized truck on the market. Number 8. The brothers were inseparable. That couldn't have been more truer, and there certainly wasn't any sibling rivalry. The two briefly worked separately in the late 1880s, but they were soon job hunting together. They eventually joined Detroit's Iron Works in 1886. Before the turn of the century, the duo also worked for Fred S. Evans in an attempt to produce a bicycle using the Evans and Dodge nameplate. Around the same time, Horace's patent for dirt-proof ball bearings was a hit in the industry, but he didn't take full credit. He shared the bill with John. This surely convinced the brothers that they should be opening up their own business, and the duo opened their own Detroit-based shop in 1902. As mentioned before, they sold car parts to several automakers, and eventually their high-quality products soon caught the eye of Ransom Eli Olds, the producer of the Oldsmobile. Ransom Eli Olds tasked Horace and John to produce thousands of engines and mechanics to help improve the Oldsmobile. With the brothers on board, the sales soon bumped to unbelievable numbers. Of course, the inseparable duo may have let their teamwork get a bit to their head. They often wore the same suits, and they refused to read mail that wasn't addressed to the two of them. Number 9. When the Dodge brothers first opened its doors, they weren't producing the strong powerhouse trucks they are today. They started by building bikes in Windsor, Canada. Horace Dodge and John Dodge finally set up the Dodge Brothers machine shop in Detroit just after the turn of the 20th century. This was due to the successful deal brokered for their ball bearing bicycle patent. Then you may think the next more natural step would be to move to automaking, but that's not exactly what happened, at least not right away. The Dodge Brothers shop also started manufacturing stoves. This didn't last long, and they finally found their true calling and became what eventually became one of the biggest automakers in the world. Number 10. Dodge may have invented the word dependability. In 1914, a PR man for Dodge, Theodore McManus, decided the adjective dependable was boring. So he made it a noun, and boom, dependability was born. Okay, technically the OED claims that the first instance of dependability occurred in 1901, but at the very least, it didn't take off until McManus's print campaign. As for whether he'd seen the then obscure term used or came up with it independently, who knows. And with that, we are at the end of our video for today. Before you leave, like the video, subscribe to our channel, click that notification bell, and comment below. What did you think of some of these Dodge Brother facts? Need parts for your rig? Check out our website, jackschromeshop.com, as we have a wide variety of products. If you can't find what you're looking for, just give us a call or send us an email, and we'll help find what you're looking for. Thanks again guys for watching, I'll see you next time, and remember, if your rig don't shine, you don't know Jack.